Hello and welcome. In the previous episode of our tutorial series, we talked about an introduction and overview into the Adobe Photoshop application. We talked about how Adobe can be used, or the Photoshop can be used for the creation and manipulation of images and graphics, um, especially um, raster graphics. And also, we talked about the limited use or limited ability the application has when working on uh, vector graphics. We also talked about a little bit about raster graphics and vector graphics. And then we talked about um, installing the Photoshop application and then opening the Photoshop application. Now, in this episode, we are going to be talking about the interface of the Photoshop application. Let's get started. First, one thing you need to know about the Adobe application is that it has been around for a very very long time and there have been a lot of versions relating to the application from the cs versions to the cc versions but one thing that is really certain about this application is that the interface remains almost unchanged now for almost every for almost every adobe photoshop application you use despite the version you will probably see or notice that the interface, the look of the application will look almost the same. That's why I said it doesn't matter the version you're using while working with this tutorial, we will probably get to use, and you probably get to understand easily what I'm talking about. Now, for those that are new to the Adobe Photoshop application, I am going to be showing you around. Now, the first thing I want us to work on once we have opened up our Adobe Photoshop application is to go down to the Windows menu. You see the Windows menu at the top here? Click on it. Then move down to Workspace. Now, when you go to Workspace, look for Essentials. You can see essentials here for me it has default right on the side of it in brackets now click on essentials then go back to windows move down to workspace and then scroll down to reset essentials now what this does is that it resets our windows workspace to a default view so even those that are probably not opening Photoshop for the first time, their application will definitely look like something like this, which means that they will find it easy to follow us in this tutorial. So with these settings, we all have the same status and setup. Now we will talk about customizing the layout in later on in the series. Now, the um, next thing we're going to talk about is the color. Now, you can see that our color has um, kind of a, a gray color. Our Photoshop application has a gray color. Now, if you're using older versions of, okay, like C CS6 and CC versions, they all have this particular gray color but if you're using the cs 5.5 or cs 5 and um, later versions you will notice that it actually has a white color but you can actually customize that now if you want to change your color all you need to do is find the preferences um pre preferences option and we're going to do that right now I'll click on edit down to preferences then interface once I click on it it will show me the color theme under the appearance options now you can see that we have four different color themes we have the very dark theme 
we have the gray team we have a lighter team and then we have a very light um, color team now it depends on whichever theme you want to use but for this tutorial i'll be using the gray theme which comes default with my cx sys now i'm going to click on ok now remember you can use any color you want it's all up to you but for my tutorial i'm going to be using this particular color now okay there we go now next we are going to be talking about other various functionality of the application but um, first let me open up a project file that will help me explain better okay Okay, I'm looking for for the shop files, PSD and PUD, okay? And open. Now I, I basically just opened a Photoshop file just to explain uh, the interface of the application. You can open up any file, any image on your computer. Um, this will help us to just better understand the interface. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, um, the first thing you will notice on um, Adobe Photoshop, at the top of your application, you have the menu bar. Now, the menu bar contains a list of menu options, which are very essential when working with Adobe Photoshop in creating graphics. Now, we have um, menus or options like the file option, we have options like the edit options we have image option we have layouts option we have type option select option filter option 3d option view option window option and the help option now remember that you can actually assess any of these options by clicking on them and each of these options have various functionalities like the file option for example you can use an opening a new document or opening a previous document you can um, open as you can save you can close your application you can import and export using just this file menu same with other menu options they all have various degree of uh, functionalities so if you want to use them all you have to do is click on the option you want to click on and go ahead and click on the functionality you're looking for and there you have it you have access to the option we are going to be talking about all these options later on in the tutorial series now on the left hand side of your screen we have what we call the tools panel now the tools panel is just made up of various tools that we are going to be working with in our adobe photoshop application now no matter what you are creating you can never work unless you use these two options they are very essential in creating and manipulating graphics now one thing you notice when you look on the left hand side of the screen is that there is a particular icon that is representing each and every one of those tools now this first icon here is the move tool and you can see that it is represented by a mouse um, icon plus um, an, an arrow something like an arrow or a cross okay so um, one thing you also need to notice is that once you click on any one of these um, tools option you will notice that the particular tool has been grayed out what this means is that that tool is currently very much active so that means that at that particular moment that is the current tool that you are working with something else that you will notice is that once you click on the tool option and you carry your mouse cursor into your workspace you will notice that the mouse cursor is changes to the icon that represents that is represented by the tools in which you selected now let's click on another tool this is a selection tool you can notice that the icon has changed same with uh, the various icons that are available so once you 
click on any of this icon and becomes active it changes your mouse cursor icon to that particular tool you are working with which tells you that there is a particular tool that is currently active not only by seeing on this gray area but looking at your mouse cursor now um you can if you also look carefully you will notice that in some of the icons there's a small white arrow at the bottom right of the icons you can see here see here there are a couple of um, small white arrows but it doesn't really appear in all the icons just a selected few now what this tells us is that some of these tools actually work in sets now if you right click right click on any of those two that has the small arrow you will see the other sets that are available for use in that particular tool what this means is that that tool where that tool currently is you can use various degrees of um, tools in that particular area so if i right click on the selection tool you can notice that i have rectangular tool elliptical tool single row tool and single column tool so this actually gives us access to more tools if we right click on any of the tools that has that small arrow on the bottom right of the screen on of the icon screen sorry now if you move down to the bottom of the um tool panel we will notice um a box on top of another box now the first box has the black color and the second block box has the white color now these colors are called the foreground and background color the box with the black color is the foreground color and the one with the white color is the background color now these colors are essential when working with our um this sorry these tools are essential when working with our uh, application because they help us um, select the kind of color we want to use when working on our graphics now on the top of these boxes you will see an icon and now this icon is used to switch the foreground color into the background color for example i'm going to change the background color into a red color now if i click on this icon here you will notice that the foreground color the background color is now the foreground color which is white and the um, foreground color is now the background color which is um, also which is red now the next icon uh, next to the um, to the switch icon is the default foreground and background color if you click on this the foreground and background color moves back to the original color which is the black and white so i'm going to click on it now you can see that the foreground and background color are now going back to the default um, color state which is the black and white color state we're going to be talking more about this later on in our um, series now if you click on this arrow at the top of our tools panel you will notice that our tools panel has changed into a double column view now the tools are now being viewed in a double column um, view but for this tutorial we are going to leave the tools in a single column view as it works better for uh, for us okay what we're going to talk about next is the control panel right underneath the menu bar we have the control panel now this is the control panel the control panel is very essential because we will be working very much with it once we are working with our tools now this control panel gives you the options that are available in a particular tool that you are working on with this control panel you can edit or further edit or further customize the tool that you want to work on or want to work with in other way photoshop application now each tool have their various uh, control panel options now if you click from one tool to another you will notice a change in the control panel options which means that each two have various control panel options and you can edit them or customize them however you want now if you if you move to the right hand side of our windows our application windows we will notice uh, a couple of panels now these panels are also very essential when working with our application as they help us to adjust our graphics uh, however we want it to be adjusted 
Now you can notice that there are a couple of panels open like the color panel, adjustment panel and the layer panel. Some of these panels need to be clicked on so they can open. For example, the history panel. You can see that the history panel is currently um, locked in. So if you click on it, it opens up. But click on it again, it goes back in. If you click on it, this, this is a property panel. I clicked on it, it opens up. If I click on it, it goes back in. Now, some also some panels are also noticed to be um, inside and other panels. Like for example, the swatches panel can be found next to the color panel, but it's not uh, visible unless you click on it. So if I click on the swatches panel, you can see that it switches from the color panel to the swatches panel. Also, the styles panel. If I click on the styles panel, you can see the switch from adjustment to styles. You can also switch between layers, channels, and parts. Now, these panels can easily be customized and we are going to talk about that in a later video now let's move on to um, this slim um, panel that's available at the bottom of our screen here we have uh, where you can see 66.67 percent where this is very useful for zooming in or out of our um, project what this does is if we want to use it we can easily click on it delete what is there and enter in any zoom um, value you want to enter in percentage when you click on your enter you can see that my zoom has been fitted to 50 percent um, zoom you can also see the size of our document on the um, right hand side of that panel now if you click on this you can put any other property or any other information that you want now you can choose um, the current tool that's available to tell you the current tool you're, you're clicking on this is the um, document sizes you can use view document profile you can view document dimensions um, it's your choice so this place this layer here just gives you information on um, the document you are currently um, working on In this video, we talked about the interface of our Adobe Photoshop application. We talked about the menu bar, the tools panel, the uh, workspace panels, and um, the document property panels. In the next video, we are going to be talking about customizing these panels to best suit um, the, your design proficiency depending on how you want to work on your Adobe Photoshop. Uh, we'll talk about all that in our next video. Thank you.